like your background, Mr. Or Commissioner Sear? Thank you. <laughs> you figured that out. Yeah, it I took a all summer time. you asked me. It took me about four I, months to figure I that out. I forgot how to do it. You're going to have to show me now. Yeah, it's pretty easy, really. Looks like we're ready to go. Commissioner Sear. Okay. Commissioner Sear. I'd like to call, uh, call to order this uh, meeting of uh, Ways and Means Committee. May I have a roll call, please, and your location? <laughs> Commissioner Brown. He's on. We're going to He's disable on. Him. You okay. could please disable him as well. Commissioner Heavy Wright. Yeah, here, uh, Muskegon. Commissioner Hughes. Here, Muskegon. Commissioner Laring. Here, Muskegon County Hall of Justice. Commissioner Nash. Here, City of Muskegon. Commissioner Pego. Here, uh, City of Muskegon. Chairman Skolnick. Uh, oh, here, uh, City of Norton Shores. Commissioner Wilkins. Here, City of Muskegon Heights. You're actually in the City of Muskegon. Oh, you want to know where I am? I thought <laughs> where you are right now. I live. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Commissioner Sear. Uh, here, Muskegon County. Thank you. Okay, um, I would uh, look for approval of the minutes of December 15th, 2020. Entertain <laughs> a motion. So move. Oh. Uh, are there any questions or discussion? Being none, uh, I would like to have a roll call, please. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago. Yes. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Can you see him? Commissioner Brown, he says yes. Thank he you. can hear everybody, he cannot see. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Sear. Yes. Nine yes. Nine yes. Okay, uh, we'll move on to public comment on an agenda item. Please give your name and your location and uh, uh, two minutes maximum on your comments. Is there any comments? I have not seen anybody. Okay. We'll move on to the items for consideration. Uh, item number one is WM21-01-01. It's to approve the payment of the accounts payable of $5,451,927.41 covering the period of December 4th, 2020 through December 25th, 2020 for checks and P-card payments for the period covering November 1st through November 30th. 2020 as presented by the county clerk. So moved. Support. There any discussion Mr. on this item? Mr. Chair, I have a comment. Yes, Zach, go ahead. Uh, seems we have a new board here. I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, explain my protest to this motion uh, as I've been doing in the last board. Uh, my yes, issue with this is. Go. Thank you. Bye. So my issue with this motion is it's inclusive. Uh, this is a low payment in comparison to many. Some of them go from around this $4 million. I've seen them up as high as over $15 million. Um, and it's all inclusive of all these payments. Some of them have already been made. Some of them are yet to be made. And there will be constant discussion about individual payments in here. And yet we can't do anything about it because it's all or nothing. I would like to have all of these motions over $100,000 itemized and put any payment over $100,000 that we could discuss separately. I do not like having these big payments in one lump motion. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other discussion? I would like to see that also. 
Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Marcia. Yeah, in looking at the, the uh, list of payments, uh, it would be almost every one a separate uh, motion. <clears throat> so it, it's rather tedious. And most of these are included in grants we've already approved. I think all of them are. <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Mr. Nash. I would like to make a suggestion that if uh, commissioners are interested in seeing that, that maybe they could have the staff send them that information prior to the meeting. That way, if they have any questions, they can put those to the staff. Uh, but it's it's not something that I'm, you know, I need that. No. We've already approved the grants, so, you know, it's... My point is they're not all grants, so I'm, I'm, yeah. you're not addressing me. They're not all grants. And every time we go through this, uh, in particularly, uh, Commissioner Hovey wright uh, you ask questions about individual payments that you can't do anything about. So what's the point in questioning an individual payment if you can't single that payment out for discretionary purposes in a vote? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, yes, Commissioner. I think we Price. could we could make an uh, an amendment to uh, separate out an item if that's the case. Thank you, Marsha. Uh, so yes. Before, before we do that, could um, Mr. Mr. Chair may, make a comment? Yes. Um, I think it would be possible to give um, whoever wants or all of us access to those payables electronically and you could actually look at, you could look at whatever you wanted to look at and then if you have a question you can bring it forward at the next meeting or at the meeting before before we vote on this stuff that would not that would not um be a solution to the what commissioner Learing is saying because if you had a discrepancy with one of the items it's all lumped into one motion I, am I correct on that, Commissioner Larry? Yes. That's okay. It, it's not the question and answer. I don't mind the question and answer, that, but that could be done through uh, what Commissioner Skolnick is talking about. We can mm -hmm. do the, we can get all the information, but if you, if you have a problem with one individual payment, which some of us have had in the past, we can't do anything about it. I understand what you're saying. Uh, yeah, Commissioner Hovey, right? Yes, um, I would ask the lawyer if we can, in fact, separate out an item and, and vote on it separately. With I, a, I like that, Marsha. Excuse me? Uh, yes, Commissioner Lehring. Uh So we actually just voted probably two months ago to continue this process of the same thing. Now I do like the DTE energy test and tune. Uh, the, a lot of these things I'm looking at right now, we generally do approve, and some of them um, are certainly grants, but we just approved doing this two months ago to stick it for another year uh, into this payment. I, I, I will continue to vote no on this motion. I, it's uh, simply because we can't itemize. We've already talked about this. We can't pull a payment out. Last year, we talked about this. Okay. Well, Commissioner Hovey wright has a, a good solution to that by making an amendment, but I don't know if corporate counsel's on the line to address that. Can we do or that? Mark, can, Mark? I, can I comment here? Uh, can we get an answer from the lawyer or from maybe from uh, Beth? Yes, I would like to make a comment if that's okay. Please, Beth. Yes, Beth Dick, Director of Finance. So um, our current financial policy that the board has approved has allowed for payments that have already had a prior board approval, like a contract, the board has awarded a contract to a vendor and it may not necessarily be this board, it could be the Health West board, depending on um, what type of payment it is. But the way the current policy reads is that if there's already been a approval of a board of a particular contract or award of a, like a bid or something along those lines, that those payments do not need to be held for board. So in, that, in those situations, 
situations, you really would have to amend the actual policy that exists today, the language of that policy to, to change that. Um, and I, I guess I would like to actually go over that policy in more detail if that's the, the direction the board wishes to go. How do, how do we pursue that? I, I don't know that, uh, uh, Beth, I don't know. I see this line item. I'm just going to try to get some clarification here. I see the line items uh, 1 through 13 that have payments uh, to different uh, uh, individuals, uh, areas that are those high dollar amount items. Uh, are those the items we're talking about, uh, Mr. Learing? Well, it's, it's all of them in this payment schedule. So this one's only $5 million. <laughs> Quite often, there's significantly more ten, fifteen million dollar payments at the ways and means. Twenty-five. Yeah, they they they're all over the map. So this is a lower amount. But what I'm suggesting is, and 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 the it, the reason that we didn't do this last year was well, we'd sit here for two hours. Well, we're public servants, and if we have to sit here two hours, we sit here two hours. <laughs> Well, I, th I think most of these payments are probably, as has been discussed, uh, according to contract and already do a done deal, but there probably are some line items on there that maybe we do need to look at and, uh, and bring up. But uh, it, it would be good to have a list if we can. Beth, is this the, uh, the, the majority of the list? Or if we get a list, is it going to be 12 pages long? Or what are you thinking? Well, these are only the ones, the payments that for a particular vendor totaled over $100,000. And if you notice, some of them say payments, not just payment. So it could be multiple invoices, for example, Beacon Services um, that added up to the 199,000. You're provided with the full complete list. Um, it's sent to each of you with all the invoices listed that make up the total of the five million four hundred fifty one thousand nine hundred twenty seven dollars and forty one cents so you you are given all of that information um, that detailed report ahead of this meeting but it doesn't allow you to vote no on one provider's bill or or our payment to them because they're all lumped together not well if the current policy says that if there's already a contract that the board has approved or a board has approved in place, then um, we do not wait for this approval at this meeting before those checks get mailed out. That's the current policy. Is there a way to differentiate the ones that are already pre-approved and have separate motions for the ones that were already pre-approved through through that means and differentiate ones that have not yet been, so they're not all lumped together? On the list that you're provided, the very detailed list that gives all of the individual payments, there is a column on there that indicates which, which for lack of a better ter term, we call it an, which exception rule under the policy that applies. And so it will list there if it's um, exception number one is previous board approval. Exception number two could be um, that it's a travel reimbursement to an employee, so we don't hold those. Um, exception number three, I, I'm not sure I'm naming these in the well, right. A travel number. reimbursement is not going to be over hundred thousand dollars, I hope. No, no, you're <laughs> correct. But I'm just saying those are okay. the those are the things that okay. we, that we consider exceptions to not holding for approval. Okay, but how do we see that, Beth? I don't see that on this listing of one to thirteen items here. No, well, it's on the detail yeah. report oh, that's okay. many, many okay, pages okay. long. Mm -hmm. if there, I, I would be happy to try to put together a different type of report if that's what you're looking for. But if, if you specifically don't want some of these payments to actually be paid until this approval that is different than the process that we're doing today, then we would need to revise that policy. The policy, right. So I think that's what I'm hearing. A few of us maybe need to, I don't know if it's a work session or how we discuss that policy. How do we move forward? Well, we would set up a schedule for a uh, work session on this. Okay. And normally since our meetings at four now, we'll set that work session at three o'clock most likely. And Is now the time to make a motion for that? It's would more of a directive. Even... It's more of a directive from the chair. 
Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, who do I make that to you, Mr. Eisenbarth? Yes, sir. Would you do that for me, please? Yes, we'll uh, create a work session to discuss this uh, policy. Yeah, Thank I think you. we need more detail. So, okay. All right, any more discussion on this item? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. All right, uh, hearing none, uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? No. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? No. Com Chairman Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Uh, yes. Commissioner Javi Wright? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Seven yes, two no. Okay, next item is WM21-01-03 is to authorize the sale of a 2006 Chevy Impala VIN number. Run two, sir. I'm sorry, yeah. what happened? Pardon me. <laughs> okay, uh, through the minimum, uh, minimum auctioning, uh, Auctioneering Incorporated. So moved. Support. Any discussion on this mm -hmm. item? Isn't this cherry Is tree? I, you read number Jer three, you read number two. Yeah. Oh, well, no wonder people are looking at me like a deer in the yeah, headlights. Cherry so let me, tree services. <laughs> let me try this again. Uh, item WM21 01 02 to approve the lease agreement with Cherry Street Services Incorporated for a three year term beginning April 1st, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2024, with a beginning lease rate of $11.66 per square foot with 2% increases on October 1st of each year, and authorize the board chair to sign the lease agreement. So moved. Support. Is there any discussion on this item? <clears throat> Hearing none, uh, roll call vote, please, on this. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago. Uh, pass. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Bright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Pego? No. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Eight yes, one no. Uh, that item passes. Uh, next item then, W21, WM21-01-03 uh, to authorize the sale of a 2008 Chevy Impala VIN number so-and-so through Medema Auctioneering, Inc. So moved. Support. Is there any discussion on this item? There being none, can I have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Nash, excuse me. Yes. Commissioner Pago. Uh, yes. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Lehring. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Nine yes. Nine yes, that motion passes. Uh, next item for consideration is WM21-01-04. Uh, it is to authorize Stephen Reynolds, Muskegon County Sheriff Deputy, to purchase three years and seven months of MERS generic service credit at a cost of $111,000 and $111,899 as provided by the MERS plan document in keeping with the county policy regarding purchase of generic service credit with 100% of the total actuarial cost 
being paid by the employee. So moved. So moved. Support. Support. Any discussion on this item? Could we get an explanation of this? This is unusual. I haven't seen this in the two years I've been on the board. I had to have it explained to uh, Kathy or who would have it? Kristen uh, Wade. Kristen Wade is our director <laughs> of human resources. Okay, is she on? Yes. Go ahead, Kristen. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we okay. got it. Okay, great. Kristen Wade, human resources director. So in 2002 um, is the date of when the Board of Commissioners adopted allowing employees, county employees, to purchase generic service credit from MERS. So there are a couple stipulations. They're only allowed to purchase up to five years. They have to pay 100% of the cost, the employee does, so that there's no cost to the county. And the employee needs to be separating employment within the 60 days of the purchase. So for this situation, this individual is requesting to purchase three years and seven months. MERS actuarially determines what the cost of that purchase is. So in this situation, it's $111,899. And then the employee will separate employment within 60 days. Uh, in this situation, this employee is separating employment in February. And 100% of the cost will be paid by the employee. Mr. Chair, can I ask another question just because I'm not? Please, Zach, thank you. What, what are generic service credit? What, what is that? Well, MERS allows to buy military time, which the county has not elected to do. And so then the other option is just a generic service credit, which is basically non-military time. Those are the two categories. Hmm. So he's, I, I don't, I guess he's paying for it. So I'm not going to dig any deeper. It's just <laughs> it's serious. So to me. So. He's uh, buying years of retirement apparently is what's going on. That's what I was going to say, but I didn't want to yeah. be too busy. <laughs> I would like to make a, I'd like to make a comment that we yep. did discuss some of this uh, earlier and uh, no, that, that's, and uh, thank you for a little bit better explanation. So thank you. Any more discussion? You know, I if I could, uh, Ken, yeah. if I could just say, yes, in, in my years uh, on this board, I don't think I've seen one. I was, uh, I was sort of shocked to see how much this was. Uh, somebody made the comment that um, he would it would make his retirement more, but he'd have to live to be almost 90 to break even on this thing. 86, <laughs> I think. Uh, that's a ton of money to pay for some extra retirement. Any other comments? I, I'll just make one comment because being on this board for some time, um, I've seen this happen with uh, <laughs> different employees at different times. So. We may not have had any lately, but this has been a regular practice um, for such the years that I've been on the board. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments? <laughs> Being none, uh, I'd like a roll call vote on this item, please. Commissioner Pago. Yes. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Nine yes. All right, that motion passes. Uh, next item is WM-01-05, and it is to authorize the staff to allocate 770 or 775 square feet of vacant space on the second floor of the Central Services Building to the public defender and move forward with necessary alterations to accommodate the public defender space needed with costs to be paid by the MIDC grant. So moved. Support. We have uh, any discussion on this item? Any 
discussion at all? Yeah, I just have a question. Essential services is, is uh, the court, the building where we're our, our uh, offices. Which Correct. which building yes, is the? Uh, yeah, IT is on first and second. Finance is on first and second, and well, actually second, and the drain office is on first, second. Over on the Baker campus. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Here's none. Roll call vote, please. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Javier Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Leering. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. Nine yes. Nine yes, the motion passes. Uh, moving on to item six, which is old business. Is there any old business to discuss? Mr. Yes, this is Mark. Sear. Oh, whoops, sorry. Please, please address the chair, chairman when, with your questions. Oh. We recognize Mark. Please. Yes, um, I'm here to speak about the airport management, and I have uh, Director Bob Lukens here as well. Um, this is really an update. Uh, in December, you gave direction for us to work with corporate counsel to work on a contract. We are working on that. We've shared information back and forth with corporate counsel, and we have a meeting with F3 on Monday. Um, which they are on this call as well. Um, in your attachment, you will find a FAA compliance report, an F3 proposal, the cost proposal from F3, performance incentives attached, uh, follow-up questions and answers from our meeting in December is in this packet, and director of finances memo on the budget uh, of the airport is also included in this packet. Um, so I'm going to open it up for questions for Bob or I, if there's any questions since our last meeting. Um, the expectations <laughs> is that full board will have to make a decision on which direction to go, whether we hire our own director or we hire F3. Um, we still have FAA meetings meeting with them again this week to discuss uh, further compliance as well as filling this position. So I'll open it up for questions, if there are any, from the board. Mr. Chair, I have a question, if I may. Yes, Commissioner Larry. Uh, so when you say full board, are you talking full board, uh, the next full board or some point down the line? Ideally, it would be the 12th, next Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Mark, I had a question. Um, if we're looking at going with this private organization or going with our own person, do we have some persons in mind? Yes, uh, Bob did a uh, parallel process through this. He worked with the finance department, purchasing department, the F3, a RFQ out there. And that was one side. He also did a advertisement for positions he interviewed he does have it narrowed down to one person is there any way we can get some updated information on that person um it's still held confidential on what he asked for it to be confidential unless it's changed in the last week bob lukens uh bob lukens community development director no at this time it's still confidential um we did i did have a discussion with our consultant though and there are um other individuals that could uh, be potentially interested in the position too. Uh, of course, to do that, we'd have to go out for another uh, another uh, job. Uh, post. Yeah, I guess it's just hard to make a decision not knowing who we're going to be looking at. And it kind of puts it at a, a, a different um, it, it kind of it, it's they're at a disadvantage um, versus this firm. But the reason I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in, in this way is because we've gone with private organizations for multiple things throughout the county in different departments. And the record is they've never worked out. We've always end up losing money. 
And that's my concern with us going with the private organization. They don't have any, um, they don't have any skin in the game. Um, and it, I mean, I, I, I hear we have an incentive package, but still my concern is that, you know, the bill is ours. We have to pay it no matter what. And when we don't have someone that's directly connected with the county, they really don't have anything to lose versus having someone that is an employee. And like I said, we've gone through several different private organizations over the last decade, and I haven't seen one work out. We've always ended up paying out way more than we started with. Thank you. Thank Mark, you. Uh, Mark I have a question. Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner. Uh, Mark, uh, did you, you mentioned that you benchmarked some uh, uh, other organizations like F3 and similar situations with other, and I think you made a comment there was some uh, good confidence level that uh, these this particular individual or firm would be able to uh, provide uh, additional information to what they would do further. So, and I, I think you mentioned Traverse City and some other airports that might have done similar situations. Is that correct? Um, Bob, Bob Lucas uh, did sorry. the uh, research on uh, other facilities that they ran. The discussion up at Traverse City is they, they're ran by a county, a city in another county, and they're going in, they're headed to the authority as last I heard. But Bob, did you do the research? On other companies that provide this service or? Yes, yes. Uh, there are other companies that provide the services, uh, airport management and operations services. Uh, a number of those companies um, provide specific services for airports, such as operating terminals, um, operating fixed base operations there, which is fueling, um, repair, uh, those sorts of things uh, for for private pilots and for uh, charter company air companies airlines um, in America the uh, there are not many companies that provide full kind of turnkey airport management operations uh, but there are about four of them in the U.S. that I was able to locate. Um, the proposal that we received was from F3 Airport, and um, they are also on the line today. Commissioner Mr. Hovey Wright. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. Um, uh, having worked at the state, and there are several times that we privatized, uh, we privatized uh, food in the prisons, we privatized schools that weren't functioning well uh, locally, you know, the, the fitness center or the college privatized running of the fitness center and none of them worked out. Um, and in looking at F3's uh, credentials, uh, the one airport that they've managed in Waukegan would, didn't even have passenger. It's the, there's no passenger uh, service. Um, so I'm not sure that they'll have all that much more expertise. Um, and um, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm certainly trying to be open to all options. I, I'm not sure I know all the considerations here uh, uh, because there seem to be a lot of options, not just um, uh, hiring an airport manager versus a firm. Uh, and I guess I'd like to hear more about those uh, from you, Mark. I would I would agree with that. I would like to see actually if we have any other options as far as uh, like this F3 uh, outfit, if there's anybody else out there, uh, I would really like to see and I don't know if if us as co uh, county commissioners go that far, but I would really like to see a presentation by those people. So we can uh, ask questions directly to the individual that uh, is looking for the business. Um, but to address uh, Mr. Nash, one of your uh, uh, I, I asked about the F3 organization and apparently they said that uh, they would uh, uh, probably be opening up positions that they would have and would let the people that we have at the airport currently working at the airport currently uh, apply for, for those positions. So, I mean, that would. Uh, but they would lose their benefits. They would lose yeah. their. Yeah. 
their uh, retirement. Mr. Chair. And if I could address that. Commissioner Nash, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I just wanted to address that because we do have some employees that's out there that has a long period of time. Um, I sat and talked with them. Uh, these are very dedicated workers that we have out there. They're willing to do whatever they can to help try to save that job and, and save that airport. And they mentioned a lot of things that we haven't been doing currently that we used to do in the past with job sharing, because uh, we've been contracting and, and, and privatizing a lot of the things that they have been doing in the past. But in certain cases, they have to be certified, they have to be deputized or whatever it may be. But they're all still willing to do that. And I think that, you know, if we had a good leader out there, because we've had run that in the past and it hasn't been as bad as it is now. But I think that, you know, that's, it's just another option. I want to look at everything too. I'm not totally against privatization, but I do say our track record with that has not been great. Um, but I do think with the right leadership and the right credentials of the of the leadership, uh, we may be able to get ideas from this staff that can help us uh, do some job sharing and, and, and save some money out there. Okay, duly noted. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Skolnick. You know, I'm, I'm looking, I don't know, if have they been here? Have they looked at this thing in person? Because I'm, I'm looking at their organizational chart and they're showing uh, a general manager, uh, an administration director, a deputy director, administration assistant, a management trainee, a management trainee intern, and only really four people to do the work. And we only have, we've never had more than like uh, a manager and uh, like an executive assistant out there, an administrative yes, they, assistant. This is Mark again. They, they oh, kind of answered that question last time, if you recall, they said that all their positions are more title, they all work. Um, but again, I don't want to speak for them. They are online, we can listen to them today or ask them to do a presentation again next Tuesday. Okay. If I may add something, Commissioner? Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, we did put out an RFP for this um, this service, and uh, a number of companies looked at that RFP, downloaded that RFP, um, and elected not to submit a proposal. So um, I just wanted to let you know that, that it was out there. Um, we, we contacted the four companies that I mentioned earlier and let them know that the proposal was out there, uh, but we did received the single proposal. Okay, thank you. Mr. Uh, Chair, may I? Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner uh, Pago. Thank you. Uh, um, so one of the first statements that Commissioner Nash mentioned is there's been a private individual apparently that's been an applicant for the director position, but the information is confidential. Is it always going to be confidential? Are we getting an opportunity to review that before we have to make our decision? That's how, I don't know how we're expected to make a decision if we can't know what the credentials are of this other person. Uh, they, they, they are a... And by Tuesday in five days. Right. Mm -hmm. The manager <laughs> positions are usually made up by the, by the directors of the department. Oh, okay. So really the okay. only positions that are coming from the board to so make the decisions director, are the director level. The director has that information. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Will the director make a recommendation to the board on what his preference is? At this point, wow. we want to provide both options for you because it is... Um, obviously affects the employees out there one way. And, but more important, I think more importantly that we need to take a look at is what our options are. And I wanted, uh, Commissioner Sear, we talked about this, is we need to have a work session to discuss our long-term, because we have a yes. $900,000 deficit headed our way come 2022. And we need to know if we're gonna subsidize that. If we're not, what does that look like? Um, it, are there options for the airport? If we do not provide services anymore, does a general aviation airport make sense? Does a, an authority make sense with Grand Rapids if they're even interested? 
And if we keep the airport ourselves and try to run it ourselves too, we, we need funding, which means a millage. Uh, so all these things you, we really had to vet through. The reason this position is coming in front of you now and we're asking for a decision which way to go is because FAA is want to make sure that we are in compliance, but more importantly, have a full-time manager on staff. And that decision has to be made by the 12th? Yes, that means they've extended it to the 12th. They wanted that decision before COVID. Now they wanted it after COVID. Um, but this decision doesn't, whether you hire a manager or work with F3, we still have to decide how we're going to fund 2022. That's a bigger question to me. Mm -hmm. Mr. Humphrey, you're right. Yeah, um, in the proposal from F3, they said it would take 90 days before they were up and running. And, and that seems like a, a delay that we might not be able to afford to make. Um, I would let them speak, speak on that. They may have changed that date. If you're willing to listen to a presentation and they can make next Tuesday, I'll ask them to present. Yeah. I think with all the new people we have, that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, Commissioner Sear, I think yeah. we all received sure. the airport operation numbers uh, for the year without December, I think. Is that true? Is that yes. Um, and right. the numbers were really terrible. And it's mm -hmm. airports all over have fallen off. The thing that's concerning me is, are they going to come back? Um, and nobody knows that. But I know that my uh, friends and family that typically flew a lot for business are pretty much projecting there's going to be less flying because the Zoom these Zoom meetings are taking the place of a lot of the travel that used to happen. Um, anyway, I, I don't know what, I'm just saying that for information. I don't, there's no numbers to it, but I, you know, if the airport is only serving say 20,000 people a year instead of 40, probably not worth having an airport here. Well, no, that, commercial that's, airport. A decision, that's a decision, Bob, that we have to make is whether we want to go forward with this or not. Uh, and I think it's going to take more than, you know, and I realize we have a short amount of time before we make some type of a decision, but we have to decide whether we can make this airport a going concern or not. We need to think, make some money. Uh, if we're going to bring in a manager, uh, uh, you know, I would hope he'd be the magic guy that knew how to make that happen. Um, some of the uh, air travel has been picking up recently. The numbers have looked like uh, people are starting to fly again. There, there are a lot of them that are still zooming and, and uh, to your point that, that aren't going to be flying. But, uh, you know, if we're going to try to make this thing a going concern, we have to, we have to uh, go down that road. I, I think one of the things that we should do, and I uh, talked with Mark about this, this is, is to uh, maybe quiz some of the uh, business leaders around the area of some of these uh, 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 different companies and see if uh you know see what their thoughts are do they need the airport do they want the airport so they can fly in uh, you know people uh i don't know that's just some thoughts that's a great idea kim mr chair uh yes uh commissioner and i i just want to uh go back to that point that uh myself and um commissioner pagel make is that i still think we're at a disadvantage not knowing who we can select to manage this as an individual. Um, and it just seems awful weird to me because we've done confidential uh, interviews even for administrators. So I don't understand yeah. why this is a different case. I just think that we're not getting enough information to make a sound decision. Uh, I, I would agree with that. I think we need to be able to talk to the in, an individual that is maybe applying for this position just to quiz him and to see what his thoughts are and how he may think he can make this a going concern. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Pagel. Is, uh, is there a way to get the person's qualifications without his identity? Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, I think so. I think we can do that. Hey, uh, Mark, the and then my follow up, I have another question to that. Uh, Mark, you said our more important issue is the budget. And can we schedule a work session before Tuesday's meeting to address that or? Well, I mean, 
We could, but I think that's a separate issue. I mean, you could that's go separate. with okay. You could go with either. It just seems like we're either. putting the cart before the horse. I mean, no, why you, are you we could go with at... either option. Yeah, you could okay. go with either option. You're still going to have the budget. Okay. Mr. Chair, I have a question, if I may. Yes, Commissioner Larry. So I, I want to address this idea of skin in the game. Uh, the county commissioners have been managing this airport at a loss for years. Uh, we have had paid staff out here for at a loss for years. Uh, skin in the game, a private company does have skin in a game. It's called profit. And if they're not profitable, they're not going to be successful. However, if we have an employee out there, he does not have skin in the game because if it's profitable or not, uh, he's going to be there till he decides to leave. So my suggestion is the argument about skin in the game. Uh, our taxpayers have skin in the game, and we've been squandering it on this airport for years. So we need to make some drastic changes pretty quick. If I could make a comment, Commissioner, um, yeah. I, I understand where you're coming from, Commissioner Lowering, uh, but we need to have the airport up and running and compliant with part 159 at all times. That's, Agreed. that's the biggest issue that we have. And I would say that, that our staff out there is dedicated to the airport, dedicated to their jobs. And they are, um, you know, they, they keep our airport up and running. I just wanted to make that comment. Chairman Sear, this is Mark again. Um, I've talked to John, and John, uh, the the uh, principal owner of F3, is available for Tuesday. The question is, do we want to start that work session discussion at three before the meeting, or Please. during the meeting? Before, oh, well. three o'clock. Can everybody make three o'clock? Yes. Yes. All right, I'll, I'll, make, yeah. I'll, I'll schedule that for three o'clock on Tuesday. And you'll send out an invite to everybody, correct? Correct. Okay. Kathy is going to. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair, I have a, a, a question, or a, yes. uh, I need to yeah, retract my vote on item um, two and change that to yes. Okay, mm -hmm. who would take care of that? Kathy, could you take care of that? Yes, I can do that. Thank okay. you. Any more discussion on the airport? Being none, uh, item number seven is new business. Is there any new business to come before the board? Hearing none, item eight is public comment. Is there any public comment at this time? There's one, Tony Barnes. Okay. <clears throat> so we let Tony in. Yeah, yes, I'm here. So I do have one question. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to speak. Uh, this is Tony Barnes at 5920 Metamore Lane, Twin Lake. Uh, I heard the discussion, and it was a, a very good discussion, healthy discussion with regard to <clears throat> contracting out at the airport <laughs> versus hiring somebody local, but. I think I also heard that we're going to have a deficit no matter what direction we go. <clears throat> My concern is if we <clears throat> go with, uh, is there a contract with, I think it was F3 that may be doing this, um, that could be potentially doing it. If there's a contract for three years and the commissioners decide we're just going to close the thing, are we in trouble uh, at that particular point financially with the obligations owed to that particular individual? I just think there might be some advantages to stay in, local that was just my two cents i have not heard any debate with respect to that so thank you for the opportunity to speak today i think in any contract there's going to be some type of a performance uh, uh clause in there i would think i i don't know i haven't seen it uh mark can you address that at all or not severability usually there's different things yes there, there'll be a clause in there to uh, for either one for them to exit or for us to exit we're looking at six months currently, but we got to discuss that with them on Monday. Okay. Any other comments? None. You did a good job, Commissioner Sear. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Commissioner Pago. Any other comments from the board? We're on final board comments now. 
Yes, we are. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to congratulate you on your first meeting. Uh, Commissioner Sear, you did a good job and look forward to working with you this year. Thank you, Commissioner Learing. I appreciate that. Uh, you know. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> me too. <laughs> are you going to give me a hard time, Marsha? What are you doing? No, I'm going to say good job also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? No move. No move. So, support. Do I have to vote on this or not? Second. Second. All in favor, it's up say to you, aye. Mr. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, you don't.